weekend best of three series for today. It is going to be Southeast Asia taking on the Turkey All Stars. I'm ready. This format is great. We got Summoners Rift, Assassin Mode, then 1v1s if we need it. Super, super hype. I'm so ready to get into this. So am I. So let's take a closer look at the All Stars in the second IWCA semi final. First, representing the Turkish TCL up in the top lane is going to be Eldwin. Heading into the jungle is going to be Crystal. In the mid lane, we have Naru, and the AD carrying support will be Zaytnot and Double Doge. Friends become enemies. Enemies become friends because they were from Team Fire as well, facing Turkey on the other side of the rift. It is the Vietnamese All Stars from Southeast Asia in the top lane. QTV in the jungle. Levy mid lane is Optimus. AD carry Celebrity, and their support is Ron Op. It's going to be a huge match between these two, all fighting to see who will head into the grand finals to take on Japan, who just won their semi-final match. I mean, the desk, we're talking about a couple of key matchups here, but what are you really looking at, Stress? I'm looking again if that LeBlanc is coming through. Nauru is one of the biggest players, pretty much when you look at like European challenger and Turkish uh, history throughout you know, the entirety of League, he's always been playing LeBlanc. So it's been banned in pretty much every single game up until this point. If he gets his hands on it, I expect him to go huge, but that's unlikely. <laughs> and one place we'll definitely get to see his hands on that would be that Assassin mode later oh, on yeah. in the day, because we're guaranteed to play at least two games in this best of three series. First up, though, is going to be on Summoner's Roof, and mid lane seems like a really important matchup. It does seem like an important matchup, but my eyes also have to go up towards the top side, too, because, you know, we saw Maokai come out of the SEA team in their first round Summoner's Rift, which, you know, it was a pick to try and hold through with the rest of the team and play that tank style with Courage of the Colossus, but it didn't ultimately end up offering too much, and they kind of got ripped apart by the vein in the bottom lane before they could ever get the Maokai tanky enough to survive, so top lane is another question in my mind. So we'll have to see if that's going to be picked up in the top lane, but for now, we're going to head into Champions Select to see what these two teams are going to pick a band for their first match on Summoner's Rift. Uh, we're still waiting for the meta to fully settle. We've only really had five Summoner's Rift games, and we've seen a lot of different things. The Brazilian team with a lot of tanks. The CIS team had tried to kind of bring in a lot of what was on 618, and it didn't really work out for them in the long run. You can see the first man that's come out here for Turkey is going to be the least in. Uh a few flashbacks to how well SCA performed on their all-for-one mode with everyone picking up Lee Sid. Poppy is going to be the first man coming out from Southeast Asia as LeBlanc Whoa. will hit the bench from Turkey. And we've heard that LeBlanc is first pickable. Everybody has said that. Now, interestingly enough, Turkey banned it when they were on red side, but being on blue side for this game, you would have expected that LeBlanc would have been that first pick. Rise is the other one that people are talking about where they do well into each other, supposedly, but if one is left up, you have to... Well, if one's banned, you have to ban the other if you're on red side. So we'll have to see if Rise is going to be one of the bands to come out here for now. Syndra's going to hit the bench, so quite a few mid lane bands coming out between Naru and Optimus. Yeah, a lot of uh, focus on the top half of the map. No AD carries or supports taken away from it. I mean, you got to wonder if Dumbledore's Bard is going to get through, but with so much on the red side to ban already, I mean, that Rise is still up. We've still got some of the other jungle picks that we've seen. Rek'Sai has been a big pick for Crystal that has given him a lot of solidarity from that role. So let's see what they're going to be able to pick up here for now. Turkey waiting for their final ban. Actually, taking their time here, Fizz is going to be the final ban that comes out from Turkey. So I do wonder whether that is actually the ban because the time had expired at that point. So I, I'm kind of holding on to my breath. The, the, the Turkey guys are, are laughing about it, so... Perhaps just kind of throwing a ban out there? I mean, uh, Optimus, does he have much history on the, the Fizz? I mean... Not that we know of. <laughs> Fizz has been completely changed. We haven't seen too much of him. Uh, a couple of times in the Assassin mode he was picked up. And that's about it, really. A Southeast Asia waiting for their final ban. And Jace is going to be the final ban from SEA. Okay, these two teams, a little bit of a, a mix around the last two <laughs> bans. I wonder whether we're pulling back out of this, but that does leave the Rise available for first pick here. No sign of us coming out of the Champion Select so far, so it looks like they're going to stand. I see they do lock this one in. Still being hovered over here by Turkey. It does get locked in, so that is going to be the first pick. You mentioned it. If LeBlanc or Rise are open, you have to take them. It seems like we've only rise up. That's the instant lock coming in from Turkey, where Southeast Asia, they're satisfied with picking up Jin as well as Rek'Sai. Yeah, Jin has uh, seen a lot of prominence. The Turkish team played it in their first time. So uh, at this point, we are looking at that AD carry and jungler. They take away the Rek'Sai away from Crystal as well. So it's another pick that's kind of stolen from Turkey by the SEA squad. So they've shown their hand with that AD carry, with their jungler being picked up. Probably going to wait to pick either their mid lane or a top lane to last here for the Southeast Asian squad. 
Turkey now waiting to go through their next few picks. Where are we going to go with it? We've already got mid lane for Elwind. Um, and uh, it's Ford Naru, sorry, on that rise. So I wonder where the next step is. Looking towards the bottom lane, I would imagine. Mm. And Crystal, he's kind of running out of tanks out of the jungle. Um, <laughs> Of course, Courage of the Colossus is one of the big masteries that we're expecting to come through, so Crystal likely to go that route, but looking at the Olaf hover for now, not quite the same play style we've come to expect from him, so we'll see how he can do on a little bit more of a damage focus. We just did a last minute swap of Ash on over towards Ezreal. So Olaf heading into the jungle for Crystal. Ezreal should be picked up by Zet not here. You mentioned Courage of the Colossus, that should be picked up by the Rek site on the side of Southeast Asia. We'll have to keep track and see what Crystal decides to bring to the rift. Absolutely, and I'm starting to, to be a perhaps a little worried for Turkey now. You look at the rise, you look at the Ezreal needing a little more time. And when it comes to, to the, this bottom lane, for now, it looks like we're looking to farm things out. The Jin and the Ezreal, Jin will struggle unless, uh, at least to kill Ezreal, sorry. Jin will be fine in the laning phase. Ezreal will just sit back and just kind of hold his own, farm things out and play for the later game. So it, it's pretty much dependent on the supports that come through now. Uh, wondering where SEA are going to go because, I mean, Dumbledoge has part available if he wants it. And we know he normally tends that way when it's up. They should be showcasing their support picks here for both these teams with their next rotation. Oriana's going to lock in, and we get Brand <laughs> locked in here by Celebrity. So Ron OP should be picking up Brand heading into the bottom lane. So we're, they're going for like complete lane dominance, basically. Yep. The problem is against an Ezreal, Zaynot should be able to just sit further back in the lane and just kind of be okay for a while. So Turkey, now all they have to do is sustain up, pick something that just doesn't die in the laning phase, and they should be able to get out of it. But there is a fair team fight presence now with the Orianna, with the, uh, you know, the Jin, the Brand, the Rek'Sai. A lot of damage can come out from this combo. Well, Ron OP is definitely familiar with these mid lane champions, was scouted by his team for being well known to climb up to the challenger ladder through the mid lane itself and very quickly at that. We'll have to see how he synergizes with Celebrity, who is his actual teammate from the Saigon Jokers in this bottom lane. Still waiting to see what Turkey's next two picks are going to be. We saw Dumbledore hovering over the bar there. It would be nice to see him pick up one of his signature champions, but instead they are going to lock in Karma, most likely the support for the Turkish team, and Kennen will be the top lane pick of choice. So they blind pick the Kennen up into the top side. Wonder where we're going to end up seeing with the Jace band as well, uh, Poppy band. There's a lot of presence now in that top side of the map. And I mean, we've seen not too many matchups do particularly well into Kennen if you're looking for a laning phase. So a lot of the tanks that SEA would normally like to go towards are probably just going to end up straight up losing that lane. I wonder whether they'll kind of pivot away and go for something that maybe is a little bit more damage focused. Um, it's a tough matchup though, because we've even seen picks like Nah lose into the Kennen. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a difficult situation for SEA. They've got to figure out what's going to round out their comp. They may just go something like the Maokai again that is going to assist them in team fights. But honestly, you might end up falling significantly far behind. Well, QTV is known to bring out a few unorthodox picks heading into the top lane from time to time. We'll have to see if that continues here. But he is very well known as well to pick up tanks heading into that top lane up against the Kennen. Not an easy task, but it seems like he should be settling for this Nautilus heading into the top lane. And this is an interesting one because Nautilus does have a fair amount of damage and a lot of presence in the lane too. Um, the fact that he's now playing melee into range may come back to kind of hurt him in the earlier levels, but until he's got some armor under him, QTV is going to have to play this one a little bit safer. But with the courage of the Colossus, with the amount of, uh, you know, shields already there, the crowd control coming out, uh, QTV is going to have a lot of impact again in the fights later on. I just wonder whether Turkey will get the chance for Naru and Zeit not to scale up and then pretty much dominate fights as long as they don't get caught out by that shockwave. Encourage Class is one of those masters that's brought that has just brought so many champions back into the meta. I mean, we see Nautilus being picked up quite frequently, Rek'Sai's coming back into the jungle. We even see mid lane champions like Ryze pick it up from time to time. An incredibly strong master. We should see a couple of champions pick it up here. And that'll be something I'm now watching to see whether Naru goes for, picks that up and maybe just is able to survive a little bit more in the fights. I'm interested to see how uh, the, the brand is going to go <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, we obviously saw it from Lacrit a whole lot at Worlds. Uh, now we're seeing another <laughs> wildcard team try it out here for uh, the uh, SEA All-Stars. So 
This is going to be an interesting bottom lane, but Ezreal Karma, really difficult to kill. It certainly is. Is this now the lane that we should be looking out for? Because before we went into Pixar and Ben, you know, we're kind of talking about middle and jungle, the top lane matchup. Not so much about bottom lane, but it seems like the picks in the bottom lane have been a little bit interesting. I'm, uh, I'm still reserving myself to a farming bottom lane, really, <laughs> for now. I don't think there's going to be too much in the way of action, but I might be wrong if they can catch the combo with the brand with the gin, maybe get a lockdown and take one out. Well, we'll have to see where the action takes place, but for you, all of you at home, don't, don't forget to go to at LOL Esports to vote for your team, it's favorite team, hashtag T-U-R win or hashtag SEA win to vote for which team you want to win in the first match of this best of, three, best of three series as we head on to Summoner's Rift. And this is the only Summoner's Rift regular match in this best of three. So this is the one shot, the one opportunity at this point. So we'll see how game one goes. We, we have pretty much come to expect from Turkey a high level of strategic play historically compared to a lot of the other regions. So we'll see whether they can carry that out uh, against the team uh, representing the SEA. And Southeast Asia, very well known for the mechanical ability, but not so much their macro play, which does seem to fall, sh fall short time to time. Checking up in the top lane here, seems like all the champions on both sides of the map are just farming, uh, sorry, just spreading out across the river, scouting out the jungle entrances. Crystal and Levi will meet here. Yeah. So Lexa just dances on top of the cleaver. So what do we got? Not Courage of the Colossus Rise. Hmm. Um, it is Courage of the Colossus Nautilus and Rek'Sai though. So there we go. Still yet to see it. I know people were talking about how uh, Kira had been playing it in solo queue and seeing how that had uh, worked out, but didn't actually get to see it in a game. So still going to be the Storm Raider Surge being picked up by Ryze. Value a... I can't do words right now, Stress. Something's happened. It's Va all right. Words aren't important. use the extra <laughs> movement speed from that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see how Naru can utilize that the later this goes. It's one of the more standard picks on previous patches. Of course, it was either that or Thunderlords that would be picked up. So we will keep an eye on that. But as we're looking at the early jungle starts, Dumbledore's inside not get the information that Rek'Sai has started on red side, which indicates the red Krugs start. So now Elwind uh, basically has to be careful top side. And Levi can hit level three once he takes down the Krugs here. The other option is for mid lane to be the uh, the point which uh, Levi goes to. If he can get in there, punish the Rise pushing, because you can see on the map already, Rise is trying to push up very early on. You can already see down at the bottom lane though, Zaynod and Double Doge are zoning out Celebrity and Ron OP. The brand trying to hit them with the Pillar of Flames, but good dodging coming out from Double Doge and Zaynod allows them to control this minion wave. Yeah, it's interesting that Celebrity and Ron OP actually conceded so much uh, of the distance in the lane that early on, because when we were looking at it, it was Zaynod and Double Doge that were a little bit later down into the bottom lane, so uh, it would have. Love to have seen exactly what went on there. But Zaitnot now pushing up. Karma has drifted away. So now they're trying to check again. Just trying to get any kind of information on Levi. Because he hasn't gone into a lane yet. They haven't seen him. So you have to assume he's in the jungle or waiting in a lane. So the the TCL laners are going to be playing a little bit more passively until they get their eyes on Rek'Sai. Levi was the, the wild card of this wild card team. No one really knew who he was. He was from a B tier team in the GPL, didn't do too well during the regular split, but he showed, has put on a fantastic show so far in the International Wildcard All-Stars. Levi will be spotted out by this board as he moves towards the blue buff. So the bottom lane of Team Fire know exactly where the Rek'Sai is, furiously pinging him out inside of the river. Man, Dumbledore has just spent so much on controlling the vision. He's now even put another ward on the one spot that you can get into the lane or at least uh, down into the river easily on that rec side, just trying to keep all the information in, uh, you know, in check as much as they can. Crystal's going to try and interrupt this blue buff, uh, you know, donation, but he's a little bit late. It seems like Oriana's going to be able to pick that one up for herself. Heading back into the mid lane, middle lane against Naru, an early blue buff for Optimus, which has been a very common mid lane champion pick in this tournament. And you can see up in the top side, QTV's having to recall. He's out of the Corrupting Potion stacks and now has them replenished from being back in lane. So what QTV was doing was basically trying to just shove the wave and trade his health and potions for a CS advantage so that they can at least be even when QTV returns to lane. The problem is it may be even on CS, but the teleport advantage now goes in favor of Turkey. So there's a couple of minutes here where Elwyn can either look to make a play or get a very safe recall. QTV is a little bit safe in that lane. Has the Fairy Charm? 
as well as the Ruby Crystal. So a little bit tankier, a little bit of extra mana regeneration heading back into lane there. Zaynot and Dumbledore are still pushing this lane incredibly hard. Celebrity and Run OP just poking at the AD carry and support wherever they possibly can, but no signs of them being poked out of lane just yet. QTV now taking quite a bit of harass in the top lane. And part of this fairy charm, the reasoning, is because he's already put two points in Riptide, his E. He's just trying to push as much as he possibly can. And Nautilus at this point only has just over 400 mana. Uh, so you can only ever use eight. That's eight and you've got a recall. So without mana regen, it's really difficult for QTV to continue to push this out. So normally it's not the pinnacle of items that you want a Nautilus in lane. Ooh, Dumbledore He's caught out. Sunned up Double and stun. down. It's going to be the passive from Brand that gets popped as well. He takes quite a bit of damage, but the bottom lane from the Southeast Asian team do get their combo off at least once here. Yep. That's what they're looking for in the lane. And but the problem is you can see how Dumbledore and Zaytnot are just like, okay, well, we've got all the mobility. We can dodge a lot of the stuns. And even when they connected, they get the health off Dumbledore. And yes, that does put them uh, in a tougher position. They are down fairly heavily in CS, but again, it's not translating into kills. And now we can see that bottom lane push back for the first time in favor of the Southeast Asian squad. It's been Zaytnot and Dumbledore who have really controlled this lane. You already mentioned it's a slight CS advantage for Celebrity in that bottom lane, but things are incredibly even on Summoner's Rift right now between Turkey as well as the Southeast Asian team. Yeah, for now, fairly even. Uh, we just had another recall out from QTV just to get the Barmy Cinder. That means Elwyn gets to stay in lane. Has hit level six is the most critical thing about that. So if there is a teleport play, he has his ultimate. QTV does not have either for now. He's about a quarter of the level away on experience. So Elwyn... He's not going to be able to shove this in fast enough that Nautilus won't receive the wave, but it's enough for Elwyn to create the pressure, clear out the control ward, and look for the next play. Meanwhile, Levy's decided he wants to start on the Dragon here. Ocean Dragon is the first elemental dragon to spawn. Ron OP is going to help him up with a little bit of damage as Brandis Optimus waits in the wings for Naru. Gets a decent amount of damage down with one command attack into Dissonance combo as Levi should be able to take down this dragon. Yep, it's a good little trade out of Optimus. Didn't decide to use the ultimate. Didn't feel like he had kill pressure. He's running cleanse and not ignite or anything like that. So no real way of taking Naru out. Naru also likely would have just flashed if he saw the animation coming, which is still a benefit for Optimus, but just holding on to it potentially for this engage. Ooh, a flash looking for the stun coming out from Ron OP, but completely whiffs the combo, trying to predict where Double Doge would go, and he goes in the exact opposite direction. All of this action on the bottom side does allow Crystal to go in on the top side now. Uh, if he removes the uh, the tunnel, and they would have known that he was there. I don't think he was spotted out, but Crystal is actually just going to ward and wait on the bush because Levy has just pinged this. Oh, he's going mid. Crystal, this is a, a bold play. Naru was on the right page, but Crystal decided not to go in. So a ghost being used by Naru there, trying to get past the mini wave to get some damage down on towards Optimus who will use this time to go back to base. And Levy had spotted him out from the tremor sense, so the information had been given across. No real way of getting into the mid lane for Optimus. We're checking with the top lane once again. Elwyn still yet to go back to base. He's about a minion <laughs> wave ahead of QTV, who's gone back twice now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> gone back twice. Once where he didn't even recall. Uh, he didn't even TP back into lane because it was uh, not available. So Elwyn's in a decent spot. But that teleport window is short, slowly closing here as QTV is almost back up. Elwyn is still pushing aggressively against this Nautilus who can't quite farm happily in range of that cannon. Meanwhile, Naru will pick up blue buff for himself, donated over by Crystal. So we'll go back into lane, should be able to stack up his tier quite nicely. He's gone back to base a couple of times now, has the Catalyst of Protector as well as the tier. And uh, you can see down in the bottom side, still a little bit of a CS lead. Actually, it's top side. There's the ult coming out. Oh, it's Drexler size here. They're looking for a fight, but both junglers are up here as well. Ooh, Levi's ooh, the first ooh. target. He has to flash away, but here comes Crystal. Slaps him with the Butcher's Axe to pick up first blood in the top lane. Now it's QTB who has to try and run away. The Riptides are coming out, but there are so many slows on top of him as Elwyn gets the second kill for TCL. Oh, they try and go aggressive on the cannon that hasn't even had a chance to recall out of the lane at that point, and he still is able to turn things around. The double stun off the slicing Maelstrom and the damage coming in from Crystal was far too much for Levy and QTV to take at this point because they don't really have enough tank stats to be able to survive. Bot lane, whew, Celebrity could have been in trouble. Yeah, Zaytnot and Dumbledore being very aggressive as they have been since level one, but let's take a look at that again. Oh, and from this setup, so Crystal and Levy knew what was up, but Elwind, 
I mean, Levy and QTV thought they had the damage down, and they just run right into a, a, a slicing Maelstrom. I mean, they have to assume that Elwind is going to use that, get the first two stacks quickly, press the W, and in runs Crystal to pick up the kill. And all that translates to is Elwind, on his first recall, straight up purchases the Hextech Proto Belt. You can already see Chris as well, very close towards his own Bami Cinder. So a very curious choice from the GPL squad. Especially with the ultimate from QTV already being used quite early during that engagement. But for now, that's given Turkish team about a 600 gold advantage over the Greener squad. And it's gonna, we're going to see if they can further that with the advantages, advantages they have in the top lane as well as in the jungle. Levi going to be able to take down the Scuttle Crab. Actually, it's, yep, it is taken by Levi, not stolen away by Crystal. Nara's got to be a little bit careful. Levi is waiting to see if he can get a gank down on towards the mid laner. Crystal clears out a couple of wards in towards the Dragon Pit. So it clears out just a little bit of that vision control. Dumbledore with a bit of a sidestep is able to uh, dodge out from the stun. But you know, that's what we were talking about with this top lane matchup is if you pick a tank, you basically are conceding the laning phase. And then QTV and, and Levy try and take uh, 2v2 where they are way down on the damage side of things. Here comes Crystal into the bottom side, has his ult. He's looking for a dive, Celebrity uses the heal early, trying to get that bit of movement speed. Crystal running straight at him, now changing for Ron OP. He's going to take it down. There are teleports coming into the bottom lane. QTV's here as well, the ultimate's come out. The Kurtikor's going to take down Crystal as QTV gets that last auto attack down. Levi's making his way right behind him as well. He's locking oh. down a mid lane first, but here comes Elwin. He's on top of Celebrity, gets that first kill. He's incredibly one, has to try and get the heck out of Dodge. The Q comes down for Loriana, gets the Shockwave onto Double Dodge. The Thunder Lords takes him down. As Nauru is now the next target, Optimus should be able to assist Levi to take him down. And a GPL turned that dive completely around. Way too deep on the dive from the Turkish representatives. They're trying to just pick up any kind of kills, but at first Crystal looks towards Celebrity, can't get the kill, so turns back around. Let's take another look at this, because there's a couple of funky interactions that continue throughout this fight. So Crystal goes in, knows that his target needs to be Celebrity at first, and Dumbledore and Zeitnon, they pull up into the lane, but Ron OP kites them far enough down into the turret that QTV is able to turn up in time. Dumbledore is contemplating taking the Blast Plant out of this, but they think they can re-engage because Naru is on his way down. Elwin bounces himself into the fight, but is very squishy despite going up against a couple of tanks here. Enough damage follows through, and Levy, Optimus, and QTV are strong enough to continue this fight because Naru only at that point had the components, his mana and health components of Tear and uh, the Catalyst, so no real damage to speak of. With that, they tie up the scoreboard. It's now 4-4 in kills. But the Southeast Asian All-Star squad have about 1,200 gold in their advantage just 12 minutes into the game. With that, we see a couple of champions going back to base. Man Immune has finally been picked up by Zaytna in the mid lane. No Rod of Ages just yet for Naru. Barmy to be completed by the junglers. On the flip side, Celebrity bits and pieces with his build. Got the BF Sword, a couple of long swords to boot as well. Yeah, going towards uh, the uh, quote-unquote older build with the Essence uh, Reaver will end up coming out. Of course, that's because of the changes to Ghostblade, the lethality, the attack speed, everything that kind of went into that change made it hurt for Jin <laughs> fairly heavily. So a lot of people going towards putting that crit damage down. Naru. Ultimus going to get a lot of damage taken here by Naru, who's still chasing down. QTV not going to hit the hook, gets the final Q off. We'll take down the GPL mid laner. It's QTV now in a lot of trouble. He's going to pop the College of the Colossus to try to stay alive, but there's too many members of Team Fire right here. The Proto Belt from Elwin will pick it up. This time, Turkey are able to group properly in the mid lane, and the Blasting Wand on Rise gives him a surprising amount. Naru just kind of walks through Optimus with Dumbledore. Dumbledore. It was only Dumbledore that got hit by the Shockwave, and now it's going to be an Infernal Drake coming from this. We saw them look at it earlier, but decided not to pick that one up. Waited for the play in the mid lane as Levy taking quite a bit of damage from Nari in the mid lane. Crystal will smite away the Infernal Dragon, the second dragon to fall here in this match. And the Turkish team now are taking back the lead. So this is as simple as Nara saying, oh, okay, I guess I'll just stun him. Um, and then Optimus tried to get himself the Shockwave, and it was already over by the time Optimus was casting the Shockwave. He knew he was already dead. QTV can't do enough here. He is fairly tanky, has the shields, has the courage of the Colossus, but not enough. One versus four after your Orianna's already dead. False sense of security coming out there for the GPL squad. Not enough, not enough wards to spot out the roaming members on the side of Turkey, whereas Turkey knew exactly 
where everyone from Southeast Asia was at that point in time. Levo and I are looking to see if he can make his way towards the top lane. Kitavi's back up here trying to farm up these minions that are pushing in slowly by Elwyn. There's the ultimate, the Riptide, going to be able to knock him up. A good flash away as well as the <laughs> Protobelf from Elwyn gets him back to safety. Oh, forcing the deepest depth charge possible there because uh, just trying to clear as much distance. A flash is a flash, though, and that is a successful trade of the ult for flash. So QTV will be happy for that. But that actually now does decrease Elwyn's ability to impact fights fairly significantly without the ability to flash. Now it's more important than ever that Elwyn gets a flank on the next team fight because he can't really close down the backline all that well. So it depends on where Celebrity ends up standing, where Optimus is for the fight as well. Well, Naru fancies a two-on-one here. Levi tries to go in for a gank. He pops the Ghost, gets a little bit of damage back down on towards the jungler. He's gone back to base already and picked up his own Rod of Ages, still stacking up his tier, looking to upgrade that one as soon as possible. He'll start to work on his blue buff, take that one down for himself. Lots of pings actually coming out from the Southeast Asian team on towards the blue buff on More the Turkish side of the jungle. Not. Well, they were thinking about going over with Ron OP, but it was Dumbledore which he was aiming for. They do have Levy on this bottom side, and Optimus is roaming down. He's been spotted on about four different wards already, though, so they shouldn't get caught here. So, you know, he's going to arc in shift and get back to safety once again. The amount of wards that the TCL squad have put down has helped them out in spotting out the roaming members from Southeast Asia. Nari also waiting in the wings. He's on top of a control ward, so knows that he cannot be spotted. Gets a little bit of damage down towards Optimus, but doesn't do too much. Importantly, though, that Optimus knew he couldn't face check through that bush because there's actually a ward in the lane that spotted Naru move towards the bottom side. It was a smart placement. Is has actually just died, uh, but Naru was spotted on his way into the bush. Again, we see Crystal move down into the bottom lane. Takes a little bit of harass from the AD carry and support, but nothing too much. They should be able to take down this bottom lane out of turret as well. The first turret to fall if they can get it, but the backup comes as Rek'Sai arrives and they're able to defend the turret for a little while longer. Yeah, with the uh, the minions dying as well and the turret aggro kind of bouncing onto Dumbledore's inside, not from the poke they've been putting down. There was no real way of pushing to finish off that turret on that wave. If they try here, they will get the turret, but will it end up costing them? Well, they're going for it. That's going to be the first turret to fall. Zaynob picks up all of the local gold on that structure as well. With the TP available from both QTV and Elwyn, there was possibly a situation, but I think the SEA team just want to kind of sit back for a moment, don't really want to take engagements they didn't have to. Rek'Sai had a fair amount of gold in the uh, inventory, so now has translated it into Mercury Treads and a little bit of extra tankiness. We check in up with the top lane once again. It's still a thousand gold advantage for Turkey, but these two top lanes are just farming it out at the moment. No real threat between QTV and, <laughs> and Elwyn. But right as I say, that Elwyn gets incredible Incredibly scared of a hook coming out from the Nautilus. Scared, scared for a little bit, uh, Elwind. Is it a decent spot though? Double the gold uh, on the person right now. You can see 1,400, 700, but uh, only about a thousand, just under a thousand gold between the two of them. It's a good lead for Elwind. How this game started, you look at the lane dominance that Elwind has had, it, it's been pretty impressive. But the thing is, we've seen how tanky the Nautilus gets. Think back to Yang in that game uh, where he was playing the Nautilus from the top lane. And I don't know, I'm, I'm looking at the damage that Esriel and the, the Ryze will have damage late game. Just looking at how much QDB can do. Just going to have to see if Crystal can get into that back line as Olaf going to be immune to crowd control during these team fights. For now, though, Ron OP has actually made his way up towards the top lane with Celebrity, and they're swapping QTV down into the bottom lane. It seems like Team Fire are going to do the exact same thing by sending Elwyn down into bottom lane to try and defend their own outer turret there. And you can see just uh, from these bottom lanes, Dumbledore and like not the amount of kind of presence they have over Poke has allowed them to catch up now over the last minute or so. With Crystal coming down to the bottom side, there's some of the activity with Naru and Optimus looking for things. We yet to see an ultimate out of Naru. So that's kind of the next play that I'm looking at is, does he roam with Optimus? Because Optimus is already heading up to the top side, not on a ward. They know that it's clear because of that control ward. The axe was thrown in by Crystal, but does not connect with Ron OP. He's still waiting the wings, see if he can make anything happen up in the top lane here. Celebrity and Ron OP just happy with farming for now. 
So a little bit of a lull moment here between Team Fire and Ice. Nara is still pushing out the mid lane. Optimus looking for a gank though. He's able to get the oh, shockwave down. Nara takes a lot of damage. Has to flash away and he's ghosting towards the river. Trying to run away from the Rek'Sai and Orianna. Oh, no. calls come out. Smashes him in the face. <laughs> That's the praise he got from Leve. Assists with that kill. Oh, I thought he was maybe out there. Nara didn't decide to cast the ultimate and try and kind of do the juke around that we've seen Exile do a couple of times in the EU LCS. But interestingly enough, I feel like Nara should have known that was coming because the scrying plant was popped by Levy on the bottom side of mid lane. Hellwind. Oh, he's going to go on Optimus. Optimus goes straight in, taking a lot of damage, cleanses and flashes away and lives to fight another day. What a play from Optimus. Yeah, he's able to keep himself alive. This is Turkey just not quite catching on to the play. So flash for flash. Levy's going to look for the Infernal Drake. It'll be the second of the game, but the first for SEA if they can secure this. Crystal is around, though. Crystal looking to try and get in towards the river here. Five members of SEA slowly grouping up towards this pit. There is no Naru just yet. He's getting as close as possible so he can ulti in if he's required to do so. He's Crystal now in. ghosting in. It will be the GPL squad to pick up the dragon. Now Crystal taking a lot of damage, trying to run away. Death is going to come out as the ultimate does get popped. Ron OP is going to pick up that first kill. As Southeast Asia, they're going to be able to pick up the dragon as well as the kill. He ran right into Celebrity and ended up dying. Naru is finally here, but of course, after being dead in the mid lane before that whole setup, there was not really the man advantage. Ooh, Shockwave used. It was only an, uh, an arcane shift that got him out of that, but Turkey a little bit on the back foot over the last couple of minutes, and the SEA region have kind of, uh, you know, evened this one back up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That's a unique way to use the uh, blast code. Blast red back into... Uh, that little alcove and mid lane though, Ezreal's gonna try and push it out with Nara. We'll see if they can actually get that tower. But first, this was the, the kind of fight that preceded the dragon. Look at where Naru is on the map. So right now, as Crystal's running in, Naru's ultimate isn't long enough range to get him into this fight. So it's still the numbers advantage for Celebrity and the rest of the SEA region. As they're coming down, Crystal easily taken out and can't really survive through that. It was Ron OP that picked up that kill. Optimus now, after all the chaos, is going to be able to take down his own blue buff. He's picked up a couple of items for himself. Merlin was the first, now looking towards a Rhylai's Crystal Scepter as his second in the top lane. Oh, sorry, what I should say, the top laner for the TCL squad. Elwyn, he's picked up a Zonny's Hourglass. It's going to be a little bit more effective once he gets his ultimates off in the next few fights. Yeah, if he can get them off. I mean, right now, when we look at this, uh, the... So damage that's going to come from Turkey later and later on in this game is going to be a little bit more reliable, perhaps, than that coming from SEA. I mean, Naru has to be careful. Oh, Ooh, good. What good a stun play. coming out from 1OP. Levi flashes in and Celebrity picks up that kill. That looked clinical from Southeast oh, Asia. Oh, flash Q, but the E first to proc the stun. That was beautiful out of 1OP. My goodness, easily taking down Naru. He's not having a great day so far. 1-3-1 one, and one has been a target of multiple ganks coming out from Southeast Asia. And they move towards the top lane. They take down the second outer turret of the game, but this time in their favor. That was really nice from Ron OP. Just uh, no real way of Naru getting away without flash. But we're looking at it like the Ezreal, the Rise, theoretically later on in the game. Ezreal's gone Trinity Force. At some point, we'll end up likely getting Blade of the Ruined King to try and deal with some of the tankiness that's going to be here from uh, the SEA squad. I mean, that's theoretically easier, or at least more reliable in these team fights. Whereas you look at an Oriana, you've got to hit that Shockwave. The Jin, if you get the time for the Curtain Call and the ability to get all of your hits out properly, it's still there, but. A lot, lot tougher to do. Well, for now, Southeast Asia look like they want to siege up the mid lane. They just brought three members into that lane itself. Levi's still farming the jungle. We still have QTV going up against Eldwin in the bottom lane. And these two top laners are just farming it out right now. No real action between themselves. Importantly, though, look, Nautilus is at two items. Fish, this is a, a risky point for anybody that wants to trade against QTV. He is going to output a significant amount of damage with the Sunfire Cape and with the Titan's Wrath, the, the dot around him. I mean, we had a game the other day where Yang, even though they were on the losing side, Yang outdamaged his AD carry. And at that point, the AD carry was going huge. <laughs> Nautilus can put up some significant damage numbers just from being around people. He certainly can. He's even looking to get tankier as he picks up the Raptor's Cloak. Most likely going to look towards a ZZ Rock portal, but we'll have to see what he builds that one into. One champion we haven't really talked about in 
in regards to his build, has been Levi on Rek'Sai. Has gone for that Titanic Hydra as well as the Cinderhawk. So a very healthy Rek'Sai. Not necessarily has the right resistances at the moment, though. Well, at, at this point for Levi, it's, it's pretty standard. Looking for uh, that mix of damage, mix of the you know health, the shields that have come through. And you can see it's pretty much where he needs to be as this game is going ebb and flow backwards in the gold lead right now. Uh, fairly rare you see this these days uh, early on. It tends to be when you pick up a lead, the team will kind of escalate it higher and higher. But this has been back and forth on maybe mis-executed dives by Turkey and, and the GPL kind of getting picked off one after another at times. But if we end up in team fights now, again, Elwin's flashes back up. That's what we're looking for. If he can get onto Optimus and Celebrity, they can shut out the team fights pretty quickly. His flash is up and he almost has his Void Staff as well. That would be a big pickup for Elwin. He's still farming in this bottom lane against QTV, just making sure that as little damage as possible goes on towards the bottom lane out of turret. Turrets are still tied up 1-1. One, one. There's still a slight gold lead for the GPL squad. 2,000 gold ahead of the TCL team. But they're still sieging up this mid lane here, Stress. They've been trying to siege and take this one down for quite some time. But here's where the advantage drifts over to Turkey. With the ability to put three people in mid lane, have the, ca the cannon bot side with teleport available, here's where the rise becomes the third limb. <laughs> you can stand up in the top side, make sure the wave pushes out. And look, it's Celebrity that is actually defending against him in the top side, which is, you know, a champion Jin is going to take so long to run down. He's going to have to stop if a team fight starts and just try and curtain call from max range and see if he can desperately get into the fight. Levy, however, on the top side, maybe they're going to try and punish Naru. They've done this once before. We'll see if they can get it again. We can already see Naru was playing so aggressively, oh, Elwin. but in the bottom lane, Elwin's the one. He's playing very aggressive against QTV. Coach Colossus gives him a little bit of health. Good flash to avoid the slow. Hooks his way towards the wall while he's done. Death charge comes out, but that's only going to hit Elwin. QTV is taking an absolute beating here as he tries his best to run away. The he's Q's out. Out. Elwin's gone here. Pops oh. the ultimate. He's on one OP as well. Okay to assist this top later, but that just gives Elwin the double kill. I was saying he was out. Turns out he was out of time. Perfect stun from Elwin right as Titan's Wrath was coming up. If it had been a split second later, Nautilus would never have uh, would never have died. He would have had enough there from the Courage of the Colossus, from his shield, to get behind Ron OP. But Elwin blasts the both of them by flashing protobelting just everything on top of them and takes them out beautifully with an ultimate this allows the turkish squad to trade their top lane out of sorry mid lane out of turret for a top lane out of turret that was taken down by naru and now that's a five one and one cannon on summoner's rift meanwhile crystal looking to try and take down this dragon smites it away so two dragons apiece to both these teams one ocean and one infernal and a void staff has been picked up by yellow wind i've already said it's massive but he just looks unstoppable right now. Yeah, he's getting good engagements for the majority of this game. That was a, a little close there from Crystal Levy as Levy was an extra level up. Man, I want to see, because QDV at this point, he's pulling forward in the lane and he's getting caught out by Crystal and Elwind and flashes the, uh, the first cleaver. And QDV, this looks dire for him, but there's the Titans Wrath the first time and is able to keep himself alive. He's buying as much time as he possibly can and it looks, it looks like Ron OP was going to be able to save him, but QDV did not have the timing on Titan's Wrath for the second time to keep himself alive, and no shield means no life left. Yeah, flash over the sun coming out from Brand there, and with that fight, he's now done 36 of his percent of his team's damage. So Elwin is on fire. We'll have to keep track and see if he can contribute even more during the later team fights. It's also even out the gold advantage slightly for the Turkish squad. They're still behind, but no longer two, three thousand gold, just about 800 gold behind the Southeast Asian squad. That is a lot of damage. <laughs> that cannon has done. Uh, the game is certainly still not over. As whenever there's an Oriana, you've always got to be aware. Like we always are looking for it. That wombo combo setup, if they can. But it's uh, it's it's getting a little tougher as it, this kind of game in, uh, you know goes forward to really find the footing for QTV. He's getting picked off a whole lot. Nara's coming up to the top side, but it's about an even game on the gold lead. QTV's been able to pick up his ZZ Rock portal, so lots of armor and magic resistance, as well as the ability to side push a wave if he chooses to do so. Should assist him quite significantly with his split pushing capabilities. 
Ultimates for both top laners have come back and are available, as well as their teleports, so should be able to provide some cross-map play for their teams. Lots of vision control going around towards the Baron Pit for Team Fires. Naru, he's picked up three major items for himself. Rod of Ages fully stacked, has the Morona Nomicon, as well as the Ceres Embrace fully completed. Elwin's conceding the bot lane tower for now, but is home guarding out, and uh, QTB doesn't have enough vision control around that river to really know whether Elwyn recalled or whether he's just kind of hiding in a bush waiting for him. So you can see QDB cautiously edging up to the bush and uh, Elwyn's going to be there in time. So this is a bit of a stalemate on the game right now. Slowing down, but again, the Turkish team can look spread out over three lanes, try and take control of the entire map. And you can even see the needlessly large Rob being picked up by Elwyn. I mean, QDB had two items previously. Now even with three, it doesn't look like he can tank up all the damage this cannon's going to be dealing. Still, Team Fire looking to siege up this mid lane. Only Celebrity here to deal with the push coming out from three members of Team Fire. Levi, though, is down in the bottom lane looking to deal with Elwyn. They have no vision on Just this one. W. But it's still going in. Elwyn's being collapsed upon. The ultimate's going to come out the death charge. Sonya's going to be able to get a lot of stuns down towards the team. Elwyn's still trying to run. The hook goes sideways, and they can't collapse on towards the tiny little cannon. Oh, they knew that they couldn't quite kill the cannon, so they were just trying to slow him down as much as possible. The problem was the rest of the Turkish team were onto the Baron, so it is stopped by the Rex Ult coming out. And uh, Elwind is going to try and hold against this ZC Rot and the minions down in the bottom side, but there's just too much pushing, and QDB is just going to auto this like four times with that damage. <laughs> I was going to say, that wasn't a lot of damage that he did on the first one. I was going to say once, and it'll die, but... <laughs> Well, they don't get the kill in the bottom lane, but they do get that bottom lane out of turrets. So it's now three turrets to two, and they have a comfortable, well, I would say, shouldn't say, really say comfortable here, but they do have a thousand gold lead over the Turkish squad. Still, it's Turkey that has the vision control over the Baron Pit. You can see two control wards placed inside the pit itself, denying all the vision from the Southeast Asian squad. And they've had good vision control, though, for, for the SCA. They're, they're keeping at least a couple of wards around their Baron area, able to... Uh, maintain it. Of course, there are control wards in that pit, so it kind of nullifies everything that that ward is offering, but if anybody goes over to clear it, then that kind of does its job. Just spotting one member out on the map. You can see Rai is now spotted in the top side, clears out what looked to have been a blue trinket ward for himself, so they have a little bit of information at least. South Asian know that Turkey have threatened these barons before, especially when Levi showed himself in the bottom lane. They immediately moved to try and take down the big purple worm, but Levi popped his ultimate, got back there in time. Now Southeast Asia looking like they want to make a run towards the mid lane here. Four members all grouped up, trying to push this one as quick as possible, but they use the time just to back off. It looks like they want to try and get a couple of items on a few of their players. Now, the point of doing this with the mid lane is the fact that they've drawn Zeitnot over, and that now allows them to clear out these two or three wards that were placed in their jungle. Um, they do have a sweeper on Ron OP, but he's actually recalling while his sweeper is available because he's out of wards himself and because he wanted a haunting, guys. <laughs> so, wants a little bit of that extra itemization. Um, but it does mean that they couldn't clear out the wards quite as effectively as they wanted to. Interesting note, though. Southeast Asia have found a spot inside that Baron Pit that the two control wards don't cover. So they'll be placing wards down there consistently trying to see... Oh, that's not the spot, Ron. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. The trap's in the right spot there, trying to spot out the vision for the team. Nari's now up in the top lane. Let's see if he can split push for his squad. Crystal still grouped up in the mid lane with the rest of the team. Dragon's going to come up in the next 20 seconds. So we'll have to see if they decide an Ocean Dragon is worth contesting between the two teams. At this point, I mean, it's very rare you see a team or two teams be even on uh, the exact same Drakes as well. One Ocean, one Infernal for each. Uh, one Ocean isn't really going to break these two teams apart unless uh, it's an Ocean for Baron trade, which you should never do. <laughs> Always got to put focus on that Baron, and that's why Turkey are drifting down to the Dragon. They know that it's their prerogative. They have vision control over the Baron pit. There's no real way of them getting thwarted by a sneaked Baron. Well, they get the third dragon for themselves in this game. Now looking to see if they can siege up the mid lane. Rhino P and Celebrity trying to defend this one as much as possible. That's a lot of damage that Zaytnot's getting on towards the turret. Naru is actually able to take that one down sneakily. And now the gold is completely tied up between these two teams. Finally able to crack that mid tower for the Turkish team as Naru. Uh, that's a good is going to come out. Naru's going to try and juke these ones out. Successfully gets away from the range and moves straight back towards his side of the map. I don't think I've seen Naru use his ultimate this game. I may be wrong. 
I haven't genuinely seen haven't seen him use it. I haven't um, seen it be used. Whether he has used it's a different question. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I just haven't seen it myself. Um, which, considering that's one of Rice's strengths, uh, <laughs> the flank plays. Like, I want to see him put the ult down and deliver Elwind. Like, just Elwind into the back line. I think that would be a great setup to a fight if they can get it. For now, though, Elwind's just snuck down on this bottom lane with QTV. Two top laners have just been split pushing this entire time, haven't contributed too much to anything at all, really, on Summoner's Rift <laughs> for the past few minutes. But you can see that QTV, with uh, the damage that Riptide and the Sunfire Cape does, and the ZZ Rock Portal with it, quite a f you know, uh, quite an ability to push out. Heavy farm game, though, in all the lanes so far. Uh, this, this game is you know, pretty far from done. Seems like Southeast Asia have taken back Vision over the Baron Pit and are trying to keep Crystal away from the pit itself. Scuttlecrab's going to fall to give them some invulnerable vision for a while. And in fact, Southeast Asia start up the Baron, yeah. threatening this from Turkey. I mean, the two-man possibility is there. Oriana's auto attacks obviously are augmented by her, uh, her AP, so it can do it pretty quickly, but Levy and Optimus have been rumbled on that one. Yeah, they get it to half health and does get spotted out by Crystal, who moves straight in towards the pit, puts a ward down just over the edge of the wall to try and spot out Southeast Asia if they make any movements in the river. Ron OP. He's he's not he's not read all of the comments. He's not not on board on the hype train that every support in existence has to go with redemption on this patch because everybody says it's broken. He's not going it yet. <laughs> well, we've got one from Dumble Doge. Oh dear. Unfortunately, none from Ron OP. He wants his Landry's Torment first. I mean, it does damage too. No, <laughs> of course, he's brand. He wants to be another carry on the team. It's like all of those <laughs> Elementalist Lux supports out there now where they're like, I don't need Sightstone. I'm just going Rabbidon's Death Cap. Well, on the flip side, Dumbledore just wants to help everybody out. He's got his Mikhail's Crucible to remove some of the crowd control from his team. Let's see how effective he's going to be in the next few team fights. But it's still been a rather stalemate of a game between Southeast Asia and Turkey. Finally, Turkey going to be able to clear out some of the vision control inside of this Baron Pit. We can see the Gold Swing still slightly going in favor of Southeast oh, Asia, but it's been really back and forth. And they have started up this Baron buff. QTV incoming, Optimus from the top side. Shockwave! Big Shockwave comes out. That takes down Naru. Elwin's going to try and get the heck out of there. Optimus lives to fight another day as the rest of Southeast Asia now chasing down towards Crystal. His Optimus run out. He's not in Ragnarok mode anymore. He's going to get taken down next. And Levy picks up that kill. At that point, Turkey pull onto the Baron and try and start it off with everybody and everything still available for Southeast Asia. Zeitnot is going to try and do something. Oh, Elwind, he's seeping into the side. He should be there just in time. He's going to flash in. They're going in. He goes in. He oh, gets he's it. Elwind has stolen the Baron away from Southeast Asia. Now they're trying to fight for their lives. Levy does get the shutdown on towards Elwind. He's going over the walls looking for the next two. Dumbledore sidesteps the captive audience from Celebrity. But what a massive play from Elwind. Oh, how did Levy not get that but I mean Elwin flashes in locks down everybody in the pit and is not he's able to secure the Baron for his team that should have been a massive backfire out of the Turkish team because of the way they started Baron initially but it goes all over to Elwin this game is just him putting the entire team for now on his back he's put on a clinic here stress he's looking fantastic we got to take a look at this one again this was Optimus's play with a shockwave and this is a risky flank from the top side Ariana on her own should normally get picked off but the fact that Crystal, Naru and Elwind are all sat right on top of each other is a real detriment to their team at that point. The fortunate thing now is Crystal distracts so many players from SEA down into the jungle that it gave Elwind the recall and that allows him to then TP in onto the ward behind Zeitnod and this is one heck of a steal. How does it happen? Early smite came out from Levy. It was 160 odd damage short. And Elwind, he gets taken out in the end of all things, but he did absolutely more than his job was worth at that point. Like such a good steal out of Elwind. And he's now on 38% of his team's damage. Elwind is an absolute monster. If Turkey can pick up this game, there's going to be huge props going up to their top laner for a fantastic performance in the first match of this best of three series. But in true nature of this match stress, it's still been back and forth between Southeast Asia and Turkey. Oh, it has. And that's a lot of credit, I feel, to the, the Southeast Asia representatives. I mean, a lot of the discussion about 
that the strength of teams coming into IWCA was a lot about how, you know, the old favorites always tend to do very well, the ones that are close to the major regions, whether it's, you know, the fact that Turkey and CIS are near the European region, you know, Brazil for so long have been so good. The fact that SEA are coming out now and are dragging Turkey you know, this is going to go well past 40 minutes, and they have looked like real contenders in this Summoner's Rift game. I mean, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised uh, that there is not as much of a difference as we thought between these teams potentially before we came into this. Well, it seems like the next objective of contention between these two teams is going to be that Elder Dragon. Zaytnot has uh, that one up. Crystal's now going to tank it up for his team as well. Elwyn has joined the fight. He's on top of a control ward, trying to stay as back as possible. Elder Dragon down to half health. QDV trying to take this one up. The ultimate's going to come out from Jin. They knock Crystal deeper in towards the pit, trying to separate him from the rest of the team. 6,000 health on Elder Dragon. The final shot comes out from Celebrity. Doesn't connect with Zaytna. He's at half health. So is Crystal, though. He's going to try and get the heck out of here. As QDV looks like he wants to go in. Gets a nice shield from Courage of Colossus. Dragon now at half health. South Tech is going to start this one up. Elwyn can't get into the fight. Look at Rice. He's starting to get into the back lane. Maybe looking the channel here. But they get Crystal. Crystal, they he lock him down. He's going down. Dragon he brings him in. Elwins goes in. He gets a kill. He gets the second. Now Celebrity's going to fall the as triple well. Kill. The triple kill comes out from Elwin. Southeast Haven do get the dragon, but they lose so many members for that one. We spoke about it earlier. The set piece delivery into the backline. Naru gives Elwin the perfect opportunity to get right onto the backline. And there was no way out for the SEA squad. They were focused on the Elder Drake. They they were not expecting Kennen to be able to get into the back line. Perfect delivery. Levy now looking to see if he can try and fight four members from Turkey. He's going to get locked out. Gets the Guardian Angel pop as he takes the tunnel over towards the other side of the pit. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place, though, and Zaytnok gets the shutdown. And if we get a replay of that, I'd love our observers to pull all the way out and show us when Naru ulted Elwind in. Please pull it out because it's all the way back by the Wolf Camp. And it's such an important play because of how deep back into the jungle, Naru pulled away, and that's the inhibitor going down. It has gone from what looked to be almost certain loss by the way that they lost that Baron engagement into a Baron steal, into Elwyn taking out the entire back line. It has all turned around, and here we go. Look at how far Elwyn and Naru come from, right into the middle of the pit. It's a little closer than I thought it was, but still brilliant delivery on Elwyn further back. I'm a little sad it was that close, but still. <laughs> I was watching it on the minimap. Still gets Elwin into the back line. He's been a monster all game, and he's just proving to do it time and time again, making the big plays for his team, this time with the help of Naru. So after that chaotic engagement, we see that the Elder Dragon has been picked up by Southeast Asia. That's going to last a little bit longer than it used to, whereas the Turkish team, they're now ahead in gold. 2,000 gold up over Southeast Asia, 13 to 11 in kills, and Baron Buff's going to be coming up in two minutes. During this time, Southeast Asia have also lost an inhibitor. What a back and forth game. SEA holding Turkey, apart from a couple of critical moments. But man, Elwin, nine and two. That is the story of this game. That cannon pick. I mean, we were wondering what the top lane pick was going to be. He locks in the cannon and then QDV answers with a tank. And, you know, they're going for that team fight presence. But Elwin has been completely tearing apart the backline time and time again. Now we're into the point where Naru and Zaytnot should be taking over, though. Theoretically. They're going to have to try. <laughs> Elwin, Elwin's got six items now, Stress. So his carry days are not done just yet. He's still going to be looking to pull off the same things that they've been trying to this entire match. But Turkey does seem like they're in firm control of the lead for now. A minute till Baron spot till Baron spawns, sorry. We'll have to see if they are able to set up successfully for this objective. QTV is gonna go back to base. He's also on six items on Summoner's Roof as Guardian Angel is his final item of choice. Whew, that's, uh, that's a very tanky Nautilus and a very high damage cannon right now. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how long it takes QDV to die here <laughs> in the entire team fight, if he ever does, because with that GA... Oh, Naru! He's been caught! Locked down! The Curta Core comes out, not going to connect! It's up to a second oh, lock down! Naru! He outclasses him right there and then sidesteps absolutely everything and smashes Optimus into the ground. Optimus did not have his cleanse available. If you peer right into the screen, you'll see it's about to come up. Optimus moves forward and again gets punished for trying to kill Naru at the worst possible time because last time Turkey tried Baron, 
They had everybody available on both sides. This time, without the Ariana, there's very little that SEA can do here, save from a steal from Levy as Baron is spawning. Shields from Nara to keep himself alive. Mikhail's Crucible from Dumbledore is the redemption. A pure team, uh, lots of teamwork coming out from Turkey there, and lots of mechanical prowess from Naru to escape the certain death there from the Kurtakor. Now Baron's been started. Levi gonna have to pull up a miracle if he wants to try and take this one away from Crystal. They're he's just, just waiting. He's just gonna wait to go in. Oh, the oh, ultimate's right, gonna come up from Naru trying to get right behind. No one actually takes that one, so they fake him out. And with that, Turkey secure the Baron. Yeah, good fake that to, uh, you know, try and show somebody Elwind. Elwin doesn't have a GA, so if he dies here, this is just it for like a minute. Critical is going to come out. Elwin going to take a lot of damage. Gets hooked backwards. Lots of shield coming out on top of the cannon. He's going to stay alive, though. Now Crystal's just charging in with the Ragnarok into the back lines. Levy's going to keep him away. QTB has popped his guiding angel. He falls down. Zaytnot picks up the kill. Oh, so much committed onto the cannon. Didn't even need to use his flash. The Zonyas bought him enough time. Proto Bell out, plus the supportive you know, items and, and play from Dumbledoge and the rest of the Turkish team. They're able to keep Elwind alive. He has his teleport available, so he'll push back the bottom lane and look to join them topside if they need it. But for now, Crystal gets spotted out by Celebrity. We're still not done. Turkey still haven't quite got enough to push this one through because there's still so much damage left for SEA. But they still have the Baron buff alive and ticking, trying to help them out with their push. QTV, 20 seconds till he's back up and respawn. Does have teleport available as Team Fire desperately... Sorry, they're both Team Fire here. I should start using the actual name. Southeast Asia looking to try and defend their top lane in a turret. That one's been tripping me up all game <laughs> long. I'm like, Team Fire... Oh, no, they were all Team Fire yesterday, as you said. Friends have become enemies here because it is all about that spot at All-Stars next week here in Barcelona. The winner of this series, the best of three, will go to the finals to face the LJL from Japan. And that winner goes to All-Stars. For now, though, we still see Southeast Asia trying to hold on to the inhibitor that just respawned. Naru's getting some decent damage down on towards this one. Levy just can't quite take up the damage that he's dealing. So six item rise that's raining in terror on towards the front line. KDV looks for a hook to try and get in onto Naru, but can't quite find it. Meanwhile, top lane in inhibitor turrets taking quite a bit here. Crystal, though, pops the Ragnarok, goes in, Zayt not goes forward, trying to duke it out with Optimus, takes a lot of damage. Top lane inhibitor turret is gonna fall down now, working on trying to take down the inhibitor. But Elwin's trying to go in. Only locks down QDV. Kodakor gets popped by Celebrity. Looking for damage to the back line. Saint not. RK ships away from the four bullets. Sidesteps the other. Elwind. Meanwhile, Nara's going to be able to take down a kill for himself. Celebrity falls. Nara gets locked down. Double kill for the rise. And he's still alive. So many shields coming out on top of this rise. Double kill for Levy somewhere across on the map. But it doesn't matter because Turkey, they're destroying the base of Southeast Asia. But they're holding for now. SEA for now at least have held on to this because they managed to take out Zeitnot. They took out Elwind, teleport in from QTV. He's right into three people. The rest of the team are not on the same page. He's trying to turn this one but around, he's though. he's so tanky. He just doesn't end up dying. This is Dumbledoge, Crystal, and Naru. Naru is the only one that really has the damage to output. Rek'Sai looking for the flank. is coming from the bottom side. QTV, oh, doesn't hit the hook. With that, now he's now going to try and go back to base. Levy looking to try and see if he can get a knock up there. That's the Rex side. Southeast Asia, they chased the Turkish squad away from the base, but they've lost two inhibitors for their trouble there in that team fight. Again, Turkey are advancing their lead, but it's not enough to close. There's just enough going over to the Vietnamese All-Star team to be able to hold on to this game that we are not done yet. And this is, look at how low Zeitnot is to start this off. He was trying to push his advantage against Optimus, but Zeitnot eventually ends up falling. Elwin goes in and remember, he has the Zonyas, but no GA. He's able to dodge out the hook very nicely with the Zonyas, and that pulls Crystal into the fight, but Elwind is low from that. Levy catches with the Prey Seeker and goes right onto Zeitnot. Of course, Zeitnot is running the Trinity Force build here, so it doesn't have the Iceborne. Go on, and in the final moments of Rek'Sai's life before GA is able to take out the AD carry, and that is the difference between Turkey winning at this point and losing, because Zeitnot would have been able to pull back, had enough lifesteal to steal off the minions and close out the game. 
We're approaching 15 minutes into this match stress. 90,000 to 84,000 gold. Everyone on the side of the TCL team have six items ready to go. The side of the Southeast Asian All-Star squad. The only one left, to, only two left remaining are going to be Celebrity, who is a big member of the team to pick up his own six item, as well as Ron OP, who's still stuck for two more to pick up. <laughs> We are getting deep into the itemization fish. There are, you know, as you said, completed builds everywhere along the rift. I wonder where Ron OP is going later on into this. Looks like he's going CC Rot for now. Uh, will he end up picking up more damage? I guess we'll find out if we go another 10 minutes or so. Oh, Zygnot got caught. Elwin's Optimus. dead. Optimus gets a solo kill against Elwin. And there goes the go button for Southeast Asia. Zygnot tries to run. Double Dodge can't keep him alive. He does all his buttons, but it's not enough. And Southeast Asia get two picks. Looking oh, no. for more. Now he's in happening? trouble. Oh my goodness. That burst is absurd on towards Optimus as Naru outclasses him once again. Naru is able to just take him out. He's on a ward. Is Naru on? Naru's getting chased down still. He can't get a free recall out. He actually has to ult himself away to be able to recall out. With Baron in 130 and actually Elder Dragon in 20 seconds, that's where SCA need to end up going. The problem is... They've got two inhibitors down and they're still getting pushed in, so there's no clear way onto that. So again, we go back. This is going to be what happened to Elwin. What happened? Did he just walk onto Shockwave? Oh. Didn't, he either didn't have Zonyas or wasn't able to get it in time because he didn't have Flash and Protobelt wouldn't have taken him far enough away from the animation unless he went out of it back into the lane. Naru was able to dodge out, but Optimus gets three shot. What was that damage? That was insane. One spell rotation from Naru is able to eliminate Optimus from Summoner's Rift. He's Opt gonna he's gonna respawn here, but like you said, Elder Dragon's back up. Optimus got three shot in the last hit. He was at two thirds of his health left. He that was Sonya's, ridiculous. He had Sonya's Hourglass available. Thought he didn't need to. I had no idea who was going to three shot there as well. For now, though, both these teams are going to try and contest for the Elder Dragon. Still two inhibitors down for Southeast Asia, but they have two ZZ Rock portals trying to hold the fort. Dragon's getting low. Kota Core comes out. Satan not being caught out. Gets a lot of shields, but they're on top of him. He has to try and flash away. Elder Dragon, 3,000 health. Reset. Resets a little bit here, but we'll pick up the fight once again. Crystal trying to run out of the pit. Satan not way too low to continue this fight, but both teams look like they want to really back out. They've kept it low enough here. The honey, the, the fruit is there to take, but nobody wants it. They're focused on the dragon. We're 50-50 smiting. Let's see who can get it. They go for the smite. It will be Southeast Asia picks it up. Crystal now called out. He has a guardian angel, but he's been left for dead because Turkey has to run away from Southeast Asia. They get a kill. Optimus takes him down. No way out. It was a 50-50 situation, and Levy, he missed the smite on Baron, but this might have turned the game around again in favor of SCA. Zeitnot is desperately trying to kite back but he's caught out completely. Once again, Ron OP flashing forward, gets the stun down. Now Southeast Asia, they're pushing Wait, for the base. hang on, we're into a base race. Rice is going in, Elwin's gone in. This is a base race. SCA potentially have to recall. Let's see what's going to happen. You can already see recalls coming out from Optimus. Inhibitor is going to fall. Elwin's going up to the back? top as well. They're working on the mid lane. They're Inhibitor two back, Ron they're OP's on to the Nexus. Back. They're on to the Nexus. They're on top of Optimus. He's Sonya in our class to keep himself alive. They're trying to keep himself alive. It's oh, last possible. Elwin goes for the Sonya as well. Turret incredibly low. Ron OP's in amongst it. Elwin's first. Naru is going to take down one. Levi's trying to duke it out they're with him. They're on to the base as Let's well. Let's see who can take down the base here. Naru's kind of Levi takes it! Levi SCA. takes down the base! SCA, they're on to the turrets! Only it's only double dodge! Oh they've my done goodness. it! goodness! Southeast Asia, they've won the base race here! They're going to be able to take down the Nexus! They're looking for double dodge first, but it will be a Southeast Asia victory! What a ridiculously back and forth game! What? What even happened? We had everything! This game had everything. It had Baron Steels, Dragon Steels, Cannon Delivery Systems, a base race, SCA. They just held on.